Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Ron from Tough Stick here bringing us a brand new video. My very first video on this channel was the best OBS settings. Now, a lot of people really didn't know how to go ahead and copy those settings and put it in studio. So this video here today is going to be showing you guys and dedicated strictly to the best settings for OBS Studio. Now, I told you guys in my last video that I really didn't like OBS Studio, but it has grown to me a lot now. The major reason is because of the dark theme, and then the second one is because it actually uses less power and it's less straining on your CPU and overall just better for your computer to go ahead and use OBS Studio because of all the updates they've done. I'm gonna go ahead and show a quick sneak peek of what these things are gonna go ahead and do for you. So I'll go ahead and show that quick 15 second gameplay real quick and hope you guys enjoy the settings. Okay, so now since you guys have watched that quick video, let's get into OBS Studio. The very first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is go to the bottom right. We're gonna click on settings, and we're not even gonna do anything in the general theme. I'm basically gonna be focusing on the actual settings that actually make the stream better. If you wanna go ahead and change something in here, go ahead and change to the dark theme. I like it a lot more. Yeah, it's very bright and it's very ugly. I like the dark theme, it's a lot better. Then if you want, go ahead and check this off. Automatically record when streaming. So when your stream's going, it's recording at the same time, so you can go ahead and get that output file. Then if you want to stop streaming at some point, but you still want to be recording, then go ahead and check this. So you can stop streaming, and your recording will still go. Because when you click stop streaming, it actually stops your recording right away. So if you check this off, you can click stop streaming, and it still will have your recording going. Next for stream, nothing here that you want to go ahead and change. Just go ahead and pick your streaming service. If you don't see it there, click on show all services, and then you should find it there. Next, for server, pick the closest one to you. I live right between Toronto, Niagara Falls, and Canada, Ontario, so I'm not going to go ahead and pick Hong Kong, and I'm not going to go ahead and pick Japan. Those are very, very far away. I'm going to have a very bad latency to those servers. So I'm going to go ahead and pick US East, New York, and Y, because that is the closest to me. Next is your stream key. Go ahead and get this on your dashboard on Twitch or whatever the platform you're on. Go ahead and paste it here. Do not share this with anyone else, and then click Apply. So now we're on one of the very important ones, output. We're actually getting to the real business now. So I'm gonna explain my audio settings. When I drag my clip after I'm done streaming, I get that output file, like I said, this file right here, the automatic record when streaming. I get my file and put it into Sony Vegas. If I ever wanna make any stream highlights or whatever other editing program you use, and when I drag it in there, I get my game audio and people talking and all the desktop audio on one track. And then on another track, I get strictly my voice. So if I want to cut the desktop audio out, I can have just the gameplay and just my voice. So how I've done this is I have the stream on audio track one. Then for recording, I have audio track one and two. And then for audio, I have it named stream, game, and microphone. So track three is my microphone. Whenever I'm talking, just like I am now, track two is for the game audio for whatever game you're playing. And for track one is my desktop audio. So for music, for people talking on TeamSpeak or Discord, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want it to be just like that, where you have it on separate tracks, when you go ahead and put it into editing software, then go ahead and copy these settings down here. Now, also, I went ahead and changed the audio bitrate. The default, I believe, is 160. I went ahead and bumped it up to 192. And I went ahead and bumped it up for every single one. The ears really can't recognize the difference, but I want to go ahead and try and get the stream to have the best. So I'm going to put it on 192. So yet again, audio track one for the stream, recording one and two. And for audio, go ahead and copy down just like that. And once you go ahead and drag and drop your file, into Sony Vegas or whatever editing software you use, your microphone, your game, and desktop will all be on separate audio tracks. With the NVEC, you're gonna see a little bit more of a gamma change, it's gonna be a little bit darker, and when you're in darker areas, there's not gonna be much pixelation, but with the 264, overall, it's just gonna be a little bit better, but when you're in darker areas, you're gonna have a little bit more, it's gonna be even darker in the stream, and you're gonna have a little bit more of pixelation. So it's up to you what you wanna use. I use 264 for the games I play, because I was playing Call of Duty and stuff like that earlier, but now I go ahead and I'm really, really getting into miscreated and Overwatch. So those games are a lot more bright, so I go ahead and use the X264. 
I do not use the rescale output. A lot of people say to go ahead and use this. I do not like to use the rescale output at all because I want my stream to be outputting no matter what. I want it to be outputting 720p. That's what I like to go ahead and shoot for. Now for rate control, there's multiple ones you want to use, but the safest one is constant bitrate. So your computer, your internet, your stream, it's going to be constantly trying to make it make sure that it stays at 3500 or 3.5 megabits per second. So make sure you have it on constant bitrate. If you kind of want to be a little bit more I don't know, if you kind of want to risk it, you can have a variable frame rate, which is going to bump it up, up and down. So in certain areas, it's going to go ahead and have, let's say, like if it has like a lot more pixels and a lot more like stuff to load, it'll go ahead and bump the stream up maybe to 3,800. But maybe if it's in like a low resolution area, I'll go ahead and bump it down to maybe 3,000. So if you want to have variable frame rate, you can go ahead and do that. But Twitch recommends the constant bit rate. The higher your settings overall, so your for your video, like, your base and your FPS, the higher your FPS, the higher your base, the higher your output, the higher you will need your bitrate. But the higher this bitrate is, the more people that won't be able to download it. So let's say, for instance, my internet's only a three download. Well, I have this at 3,500 upload. So someone that has a 35, I mean, a three download is going to have a hard time downloading my stream. They're going to have to watch it in low quality. So that's why some people like to use 2800, 2500, or 3500. I like to use 3500 overall because that's what usually the default is for everyone. Next the CPU usage to go ahead and go in depth on this. Ultra fast is going to be lower quality. So I like to keep mine on fast or I like to keep mine on faster. It's really up to you. Do not use any of these medium to place boot. You need a really good computer to go ahead and stream with this because you're going to have a lot of CPU power to go ahead and crank this out. And the thing is, if you don't really have that good of a computer, the lower you put this, the crappier your game is going to run. So let's say you usually get on Overwatch, you get 150 frames. If you go ahead and set this maybe to place boot or very slow, now you're only going to be getting about like 40, 50 frames. So just just know the lower this goes, the CPU usage preset, the lower this goes, the better quality the stream is going to be. And you're also going to need to bump up the bit rate. So just keep this on fast or keep it on faster and keep the bit rate at 2800 or 3500. It's up to your computer and it's up to your internet. I would go ahead and do a speed test and you kind of know your specs. I have an i7 4790K with a GTX 970. So I can run this pretty good. So I keep it on faster, faster. It depends on the game. So if I were you, I would go 2800 or 3500 bit rate, do a constant bit rate, and for your CPU usage, put it on fast or faster. For the profile, you don't need to do anything on there. For the tune, I like to keep it on animation. It overall makes the quality of the stream a little bit better. And a lot of people don't even use tunes. I like to use tunes because the overall, like when you're running really, really fast, it helps with the pixel quality. Now, a couple people do CRF equals 15. I don't even put anything in there because I have my constant bit rate. So I just leave this empty. So overall, let's go ahead and copy down these settings. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the audio. For the audio tab sample, I have 48. You can do 44.1, which I believe is the default. I like to do 48. I like to try to head in. I had to go ahead and try and bump up everything to the top notch, try and get the best I can. These are all up to you. This is all personal choice. So go ahead and pick your default. So whatever your speakers are, whatever your desktop audio is coming out of, go ahead and pick it for there. For your mic, go ahead and pick your default. I have the voice meter, which is my default. Push to talk. You don't need to do anything in here. It's all personal. This is all personal. This up. This depends on you. It depends on the type of mic setup you have. I don't have to change anything because my mic's already perfect. We're now going to be moving on to the video tab. Now your base canvas revolution. This is what your monitor is. There should only be one option in here. Whatever your monitor is, this is what your base canvas resolution is going to be. This is whatever you're looking at. Your output scaled resolution is going to be what you're going to be outputting into your stream. 1920 by 1080 is 1080p. Just because you put this on 1080p doesn't mean you're going to get 1080p. If you want the best quality for mostly first person shooters, put this on 1280 by 720. This is 720p. Then for your frames, put 30. Do not put 59.94. Do not put 60. 
there really isn't a need right now to go ahead and be streaming with 60 frames. There isn't any need at all. And like I said earlier in the video, to go ahead and stream, you're gonna really need a really beasty computer because you're gonna be need to boost up your, like the CPU usage to go ahead and stream in 1080p. You're gonna have to have this on very slow or slow. So leave this at 30 frames and go ahead and put this at 720p. This is gonna give you overall the best quality for your stream. Now for the downscale filter, I leave this on 16 samples. The lower you go, yet again, the better it is, but it's gonna put more strain on and there isn't really that much of a difference when you're only streaming in 720p. So I like to keep this on sharpened 16 samples and then the bilinear, this is like even worse. So the lower you go, the better it is. Hotkeys, this is all personal choice. You can go ahead, just a brief description. If I wanted maybe to do like Alt with Delete, then I go ahead and make that. So I just click Alt and Delete and then I'll start recording. And you can go ahead and do all these yourself. Now for advanced, this is your process priority. So how much do you want OBS to take over of your CPU? A lot of people usually do normal. This is what the default is, I believe, again. But I like to do high. I like to push the stream. I like to make sure that the stream and OBS Studio is getting the most CPU power because I want the best overall viewage for the stream. I want the stream to be getting the best quality. I really don't care if I go ahead and drop down to 40 or 50 frames. I'm only streaming in 30. So if I drop down to 40 or 50, when I usually get about 80 to 90, I really don't care. If I go into like a big city and miscreated, I usually drop down to like 60 to 70. But I like to keep this on high. I like to go ahead and try and get the best quality overall for my stream. I really care a lot about them. And I love getting the interaction. And the better stream, the more interaction it's gonna bring to your stream. So if you want, keep this on high or keep it on normal. This is up to you of how much CPU power you want this program to use. Everything else, leave as default. I have not changed anything else. So I'm going to go right over the settings again. You guys can go ahead and pause the video whenever you feel like and go ahead and just copy down the settings. Hopefully, I explained everything the best. If you guys have any concerns, you have any questions, you have any ideas on something you want to go ahead and see for another video, go ahead and tell me down in the comments. I appreciate all the interaction on my video. And hopefully, you guys got this far. And I really hope you guys use these streaming settings because... There's just so many other videos out there and people are just copying other videos and they really just don't know what each individual setting actually does. I'm telling you guys right now, these are the best settings you're going to get for an above average computer, about a $1,500 computer with uh, 50 down and 10 up. These are going to be the best settings. But that's going to wrap it for this video, guys. I'm going to go ahead and start working on some more tutorial videos and I'll see you guys hopefully in the next one. Peace out.